she ended up in a mental asylum and ended up escaping to Mexico. So pretty much we have a lot in common. <laughs> Necesito comida mexicana. Probablemente enchiladas of some kind. And I'm so glad the Bee Gees haven't gone back on. How deep is your love indeed? Yum! Hola amigos and welcome back to San Luis Potosí. Today is Thursday and I'm in Plaza Fundadores where I came before. You might remember I came to a car show here on a Sunday morning and right in front of me there's some kind of thing being put up possibly for some kind of concert or something. There's always something like this happening in this area of San Luis. And in today's video we're doing a few little bits. So we're going to a museum. I'm going to talk about a subject which is really at the forefront of my mind at the moment and many YouTubers have talked about this which is YouTube burnout and also we're having some ice cream so I mentioned in the last video that in San Luis ice cream is famous Helado is everywhere and I know that there are many places that you would probably recommend to me to go to there are also many Main Street places like Dairy Queen I'm not going there but there's a place right over there which has been recommended by Elizabeth my wonderful Airbnb host I've just had a huge coffee thing full of sugar and now I'm going to have some ice cream. I'm going to be more hyper than I normally are. Am? Are? I can't even speak. Anyway, let's go. So let's get past the lamppost. So this is the Lame Chocana. I understand they do lots of different varieties of um, helado. So let's see what we can find. So the uh, lighting in here is fantastic. Look at my tan, amazing. And by the way, this is the second time I filmed this bit because if you saw the Guanabato video recently where I had to put half of the video without any sound because there was copyrighted music in the background, that just happened. BGs, how deep is your love? So I'm filming this again. So here's the ice cream, which is half eaten already because that was in the first take. <laughs> this is um, helado con queso y zazamora, which I have no idea what it is. I'm assuming cheesy raspberry or something, and indeed, it's fruity. Um, so yeah, it's beautiful. Mm. Yum. Obviously, I've already reacted to this in the first time, but it's lovely. And it, it tastes like, you know, proper homemade ice cream with um, proper fruit in. I think it's like raspberry or something. Cherry, maybe? But, you know, it doesn't taste like that crap you get from the supermarket, you know. Soriana, Bodega, Bodega, Bodega. Mmm. And you know, this beast, I always get these things and think, oh, that's not much, it's not very big. It's huge. 40 pesos for this. Stunning. And I'm so glad the Bee Gees haven't gone back on. How deep is your love indeed? Yum. And while this drips all over my fingers, as per usual, there's lots of different things you can get here. So, um, as well as the different varieties of ice cream, so many of them, there's also um, aguas frescas like uh, horchata, things like that, lollipops. Americans might call them popsicles. I don't know. I call them lollies or lollipops. But yeah, so many different things. And I think behind me, gazpacho e something. Isn't that cold soup? Who knows? Anyway, that's beautiful. Okay, you might remember that place behind me, Comida China. I ate there in another video in San Luis. And um, we've left the ice cream place. I didn't eat the whole thing because this is a reality moment for YouTube. When you have food in videos, sometimes you don't necessarily want the food. So uh, you just eat half of it and chuck it away just for the video, you know. Reality time. So we're going off to a museum now. Museo di Leonardo Carrington, the English artist, surrealist artist. So we're walking back towards San Sebastian. I live just up there. Let me know in the comments what you think of these first person perspective shots. So you're actually seeing what I'm looking at, looking forward rather than looking at my face. Yeah, I'll be interested to know. Everyday life in San Luis, or more specifically, Barrio San Sebastian. Oh, I thought that girl was waving at me, but she was hailing a bus. Anyway, Oxo, beautiful, colorful buildings. This little place, the little, um, Tacos Daughter's Place, it's beautiful, they're really cheap, like Tacos Con Chorizo, things like that. Nice little place to eat. Clapped out cars, a car with slightly odd 
wheels, wonderful green taxis, yellow buses, very San Luis. One thing I haven't mentioned for a very long time is I really miss driving. I am the best car driver on the planet. I can't ride a bike, I just fall off straight away. But cars are my forte. It's that beast back there. Love to go for a drive in that. I might get a car somehow at some point in the future. I do have an international driving license as well as a UK driving license. So uh, watch out for that. Look at that beast. I have no idea what car it is or make, manufacturer. I just like driving them. Red, shiny. What more could you ask for? And there's a dollar sign in the window. Is it for sale? I would totally buy that if I had the money. So I'm back at the Centro de las Artes. Yes, art. This amazing building that looks like a, you know, a castle or something that was in the last video, but with this time we're gonna go inside. So art, yes, this is a art place. Leonora Carrington was an artist. And I think it's obvious from previous videos, art is one subject I pretty much know sod all about. So as a child, I was the talented musician, whereas my two sisters were fantastic artists. I obviously missed out on the art genes in the family. And Leonora Carrington, I'm extremely familiar with her because of my time in Mexico City. Um, she was an English artist born in the England in the early 1900s and um, she had quite an interesting life. So during the Second World War, she was in France. She had a German boyfriend or something and who then got arrested. She ended up in a mental asylum and ended up escaping to Mexico. So pretty much we have a lot in common. <laughs> And she was a surrealist artist, so one thing about Mexico, which I didn't realise before I came to Mexico, was how much art is part of culture and history here. So, Frida Kahlo, Diego Rivera, Edward James, another surrealist artist from the UK that put together the garden in Hilitla, which you can check out in a video up above. But this up here is what I was looking for, pretty much. So there's like a viewpoint where you can see that bizarre structure. Yeah, so it's a big part of the culture. Um, I actually find it quite interesting. It's, it's developed in me since I first got to Mexico. You know, art, I was like, whatever. But now it's quite fascinating, especially something like surrealism, because it's just completely bonkers and crazy. Pretty much like me. So <laughs> let's go inside. I was told this place was free on Sunday. All museums are free, but um, obviously I come on the day that it isn't. Typical. <laughs> However, it's only 50 pesos. Open 10 till 6, last admission 5.30. Museo Leonardo Carrington. Right, fast forward a little bit in the future. I have a visitor's badge on because I've been in and out. I can't film as expected because of copyright issues. But that's okay, don't panic, because I took lots of photos. Brilliant. So, this museum isn't just Leonora Carrington. There's other art from elsewhere in Mexico, but the main focus is Leonora Carrington, okay? And the reason it's like a fortified castle of some kind is because I believe it was an old jail or prison or penitentiary because each of the, well, it's particularly the Leonardo Carrington bit, it looks like, you know, old jail cells. And there's even a bit that shows um, what it was like when it was a jail. And um, I've got to say, the thing about this art, you know, like I said, I'm not an expert, but the thing I particularly liked was the sculpture aspect of it. And it, it's creepy, it's thoroughly bizarre. That's the best way I can describe it, because you've got almost, the word I would use would be chimera. So there are, you know, these, these pieces of art are very much an amalgamation of two different species in a way, in a slightly odd way. So there's one called the hug, which is really odd. It's like this, it almost looks like the alien out of Independence Day with its hands out hugging you. And there's also a really bizarre one, an elephant stroke, you know, it's got human hands and human feet, human feet. Really odd. So a bit like, uh, you know, the horse and the, the man. Is that a minotaur? I can't remember. It's, I'm probably wrong. But yeah, chimera is the word. And this might sound odd, but you know, I mentioned Independence Day and actually that one behind me, it looks like the alien out of Independence Day, strangely. But also there was an element of Star Wars in it. You know, when Harrison Ford, Han Solo got like frozen in the stone, it feels like a lot of the sculptures are a bit like that. Like some sort of animal in pain reaching out. It's thoroughly odd, thoroughly bizarre. So um, yeah, 50 pesos, boom. Leonora Carrington. I just realised I've been saying Leonora Carrington for this entire video, but it's Leonora Carrington. Bummer. But unfortunately, I'm not capable of time travel yet, so you just have to live with it. 
I'm back in Barrio San Sebastian on the, not bandstand, not gazebo, kiosco. Thank you to whoever it was that told me that. Brilliant. And I've just realised I've walked all this way with this visitor badge on my leg. Fantastic. So this video is not over yet, Huns. It's time to talk about YouTube burnout. Now this might be a bit of a stretch in terms of linking Leonardo, Leonardo Carrington to YouTube burnout. But in terms of Chimera, essentially we are all Chimeras especially in terms of YouTube. So we can either go from being someone that's highly motivated, almost bordering on manic, you know, throwing videos out left, right and centre as much as possible. And then we could be someone that would rather turn off social media and lie in bed watching cat videos, which is kind of what happened in Mexico City. The secret's out. And this concept of burnout, you know, YouTubers talk about this a lot lately. It's very much trending and all that. Uh, so I thought I would give my take. However, I've kind of got two views on it as always. So the concept of burnout, you know, it's not specific to YouTube. Everyone burns out in whatever job you do. I'm sure that's the case. It definitely was for me when I was in the UK, you know, doing 15 hour days, traveling from West to East London on the tube every day. It was horrendous. And we can get to a point where you are so exhausted and destroyed. And the problem is you don't realize wind the problem is you don't realize that it's happening and that's definitely the case with YouTube. So on the flip side, YouTube burnout is a thing and I've definitely experienced that many times and right now I am exhausted right now. I've uploaded I think five videos in the last week and it's been horrendous because you know, I, you've got to remember I, I also teach English 25 to 30 hours a week and YouTube as well. My working day is around 15 hours, 15 hours a day. I get about four hours sleep at night and I am shattered. Um, and I guess the, the point with this, if you are a YouTuber or thinking about doing it, it's not easy, you know, and you have this pressure of the YouTube algorithm says that you need to upload every day. And yeah, that might be the case if you want YouTube to recommend your videos, which is exactly the reason why many YouTubers out there explode on YouTube because they do upload every day and the alg algorithm recognizes that. And could I do that? You know, yes, I could. I could get up every morning and just do a low quality video where I just walk down the street talking to the camera that requires no skill, creative power or editing prowess. Yeah, I could do that, but do I want to? No, because I would rather have videos that are higher quality. So if you are a YouTuber or think about doing it, don't think that you need to do what everyone else does. And there's a fine balance between, you know, throwing content out and looking after your own physical and mental health. Yesterday I forgot to eat until 10 p.m. It's ridiculous because you just don't even think of eating because you're so snowed under with work. So don't think it's bad that you know you want to take a week off. You know the viewers will still be there a week later. And I think YouTube viewers, at least you guys, not all YouTube viewers, are intelligent enough to realise that I'm also a human. Uh, I'm not a robot. Well, that would be great though. I would love to be a robot. It would make things a lot easier. Um, so yeah, that is my thoughts on YouTube burnout. It happens, but just be careful and be conscious of it. And on the subject of forgetting to eat and feeling dizzy and like I'm going to pass out into oblivion, it's time to eat food. Necesito comida mexicana. Probablemente enchiladas of some kind. Yum! So quickly, here's the food. Cecina, two enchiladas or steckers, frijoles in the middle with cheese on the top, a bit of salad, tomato in the little pot thing, and some kind of white saucy thing I don't recognize. Music is playing, let's eat. Another day in San Luis is over. Another day of talking. Another day of eating slightly average food. Those enchiladas weren't the best. And also pretending to be interested in art. Although, I did really like that museum. Leonora Carrington's artwork is amazing. And, um, you know, that's what you're going to get on this channel. I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm going to tell the truth. If you like that kind of YouTuber, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. What do you think about YouTube burnout? What do you think about the food I've had in this video? What do you think of San Luis? Let me know in the comments and I'll reply momentarily. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time from San Luis. I'll catch you later. You can't come around just as you please. Pretend this is me, that's Frida Kahlo. On the sleeve.
I got him to describe the positives and negatives of this city, which he did. And because of that, I discovered San Luis. Wearing your excuses on your head like a crown. Look what I've got. A sombrero.